Jonathan Dar from HFD Fire Investigations, Firefighter 3, comma, Ortiz. After they speak, we will take a few questions and we will now begin with Chief Takahashi. Good morning, thank you for coming here today. The Honolulu Fire Department's mission is to provide for a safer community through prevention, preparedness, and effective emergency response. Many gift ideas this holiday season are products that use lithium ion batteries. That's why we are emphasizing public awareness, especially when some states like New York have already experienced 200 fires, including six fatalities due to mishandled lithium ion batteries. The HFD is always training and learning new techniques and best practices to appropriately and efficiently address new challenges. We are currently developing our standard operating guidelines for lithium ion fires. Electric vehicles, as you know, are also powered by lithium ion batteries, which are, which also power many household devices, like these items on display here today. Lithium ion, lithium ion batteries are inherently safe. They are made up of single cells to groups of dozens to thousands of cells, which provide substantial stored energy. But if they become damaged, overcharged, or overheated, then a chem chemical reaction can occur within the cells, resulting in a self-heating state known, known as thermal runaway, which Captain Dara will explain a little later. Currently, the national fire industry best practice is to take a defensive stance to ensure life safety is addressed and protect any exposures to the fire, then monitor as a self-heating thermal runaway takes place and burns out. Should there be any life safety or property exposure issues, the HFD will conduct an aggressive fire attack with hose lines to, with the understanding that it may take a lot of water and more time to extinguish. I'll turn it over to Captain Yost on how to proactively safeguard ourselves and our homes. Thank you, Chief Takashi. Um, there are so many products and devices that's in use um, in every home. Uh, here, it's easy to take, for, take them for granted. So uh, we have a picture of a bedroom with a few items on there circled. Uh, those, those circled items, one of the first ones is a laptop. It's on the bed. Uh, another one is a cell phone. Another one is a, a pack of, of electronics could be a lithium ion uh, 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 device in that in that pack of uh, electronics along with remote control uh, some of them are double AA, uh, AAA battery but they also may contain a rechargeable battery such as a lithium ion battery uh, so as, as you notice so lithium ion batteries are, are safe okay um, so if you could just take a look at various devices that are in many homes, please note that they are essentially safe. We also know that when these products are not used, not charged or charged properly or maintained properly, then uh, problems can result. Okay. Um, so we have here a bunch of items, typical items such as you know, uh, uh, for this, uh, pressure washer, drill, we have a, for this toothbrush, laptop, uh, some of these items, also a uh, uh, tablet, uh, we have another reading tablet, cell phones. Um, the reason why we have the charging cables here is because we're emphasizing use the charging cables that came with that device okay so that's and that's in the way of, of of charging these these items properly um also too if you're referring back to that that photo if you can look at how the, the laptop is placed it's directly onto the bed okay a bed is a, a is a is a is a combustible item so because of the way the laptop is sitting on the bed, there's no airflow going through it, which is over gonna potentially overheat the battery, which would then cause a fire to, to migrate. So, um, also too, the cell phone. Uh, if you're gonna charge that cell phone on the, in the picture, there's a cable attached to it. If you're gonna charge that cell phone, please don't charge it on the bed or near any combustibles. Also in that picture, there's uh, curtains. So. If at all possible, you'd want to have it away from any kind of combustibles. So, 
Um, the HFD urges everyone to identify the products in your homes that are powered by lithium ion batteries and make sure that to maintain them correctly and safely. Here are some lithium ion battery safety tips used by the US Fire Administration endorsed by HFD. When purchasing devices, make sure that it has an underwriter's laboratory mark, which shows that the product has been uh, safety tested. Also, follow the manufacturer's instructions for charging and storage. Always use the cord and power adapter made specifically for that device. Uh, do not charge the device under your pillow, on your bed, or near combustibles. Keep batteries, devices at room temperature. Do not place in direct sunlight. And store batteries away from anything flammable. Uh, now here is Kapdar to explain thermal runaway and who can go more into depth about potential uh, real dangers. Thank you, Captain Hill. Good morning, Captain Jonathan Dara, Hazmat One. As you heard, um, lithium ion batteries are basically very safe. Um, however, sometimes if, if they're not carefully handled, things can go wrong. So thermal runaway is one of the, it's a primary risk uh, related to lithium batteries. Uh, the, it's a phenomenon in which the lithium ion cell, uh, battery cell enters an uncontrollable self-heating uh, state. So thermal runaway can result in uh, the ejection of gas and shrapnel from the battery cell. It can cause the battery, the battery cell to reach extremely high temperatures. It can produce a lot of toxic smoke, and which is also very flammable. And this can result in intense fires. Um, so for example, if a battery is overheating or you notice an odor, a change in shape or color or leaking or odd noises from the device, then it's possible the device is going into thermal runaway and you should if it's possible, try to get it away from anything that can catch fire and call 911. So um, if you look at picture 8 and 9 of the packet, uh, it's going to show you individual uh, batteries from, uh, from a burnt product. And um, this, this shows you what the, these, these packs, these battery packs come in, in um, bunches. So they're, they're individual cells and they're usually going to be uh, um, in, in packs, and so what happens in thermal runaway is one of the batteries goes in uh, goes into uh, overheating. It heats up and it, it burns, and then it catches the other batteries next to it subsequently. So, um, what are the causes of thermal runaway? Well, these uh, there could be flaws in the during the manufacture of the battery. Um, in the past, many battery battery makers, especially overseas, were not so careful in the way they made their batteries. Um, you might remember hoverboard uh, fires in the news seven or eight years ago. Um, nowadays, battery makers from name brand, brand companies are very reliable, um, but and the battery factories are very precise the way they make batteries now. However, it's still possible that something can go wrong with a battery from one of these companies. Another reason is poor quality or suspect recycled products. There's a large uh, trade right now in repurposing lithium ion batteries. Um, small startup companies and even people working out of the garages will buy used the surplus lithium ion batteries and they buy components from China and they produce and sell spare battery packs for a lot of many popular consumer products. So if it seems too cheap it, it could be one of these things that's unreliable. Um, Everybody likes to save money, but in this case, it's probably best to buy the manufacturer's recommended products. Uh, you should always watch for Underwriter Laboratories symbol, the UL symbol. If a product has that, it's, it's, it's probably been vetted by the Underwriter Laboratories. Another reason for batteries to go into thermal runaway is physical battery damage. So Underwriter Laboratories test batteries for drop and crush standards. Um, they, they must be passed. It's possible during everyday use that your battery may be damaged from extreme rough use. This can cause thermal runaway. Overcharging. Overcharging is another reason. Uh, many quality devices have chargers that shut off when they're finished charging. 
it's another good reason to buy the, the correct charger because some aftermarket products may not do that and then your battery is, might be overcharged. I want to mention at this point that when it comes to products with uh, lithium ion batteries, it's important to completely read the instructions that come with your product so you understand the limitations. Um, I know I'm guilty of that. I don't always want to read all the instructions, but uh, it's a good thing to do. Another thing is to select the safest place in your house to charge batteries. Um, outside is best if it's possible. For my home, I've made a conscious effort to to charge batteries, lithium batteries from large items like power tools and uh, items like that. I charge it on my, my lanai outside, but not in the direct sunlight. I do it when I'm home. I don't leave things charging overnight. I don't charge it in my garage and leave the house. Um, if I owned an e-bike or scooter, I would definitely charge it outside on my lanai when I'm home and make sure it's unplugged. An another reason is overheating. Lithium ion batteries become unstable when they've been subject to high heat. As Captain Yaw said, keep them out of direct sunlight. Don't leave your phone on your car's dashboard. What should you do if things go wrong? Well, first of all, if it catches fire, don't try to put the fire out. Get away from the fire and call 911 immediately. Disposable of old or suspect batteries, um, don't throw loose lithium ion batteries in the trash. You're supposed to, um, the, the public can contact the City Department of Environmental Service Recycling Branch. The phone number is 808-768-3201 and they would have instructions for proper disposal. Thank you. Thank you, Kassar. Uh, my name is uh, Fire Investigator Kamelani Ortiz, or Kamo Ortiz. I'm a fire investigator with the Honolulu Fire Department. Uh, I get called to fire scenes after the blaze has been extinguished to assess all the available evidence and uh, to determine a possible origin and cause. So last month, I was dispatched to a building fire where I investigated uh, and then later classified the cause of the fire as accidental due to thermal runaway of a charging lithium ion battery, which I have an example right here. So this was the e-bike that we discovered. And this is the remains of the e-bike that was being charged in the bedroom, surrounded by co combustibles. Now this was in a bedroom and slash storage room. So there were a lot of combustibles. You're talking beds, you're talking clothes, all of that right next to where this e-bike was being charged okay once it had ignited it started a chain reaction that was very difficult to stop there were five people that lived in the home home and luckily because of smoke detectors they were able to get out uh, it caused an estimated fire damage of over hundred and seventy thousand dollars to their home okay so the owner of the e-bike which is very gracious to let us have this as an example spread that awareness to his friends who also have e-bikes. They, they spread it to, uh, he writes in like a group. So he told them about not charging these huge batteries in the in the bedroom or storage room next to combustibles to, to, to charge them in open areas, okay? So don't be careless, okay? Don't take these products for granted. These can cause a lot of damage, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna share with you some HFD stats. You can look inside of your, uh, your information packets. So from 2020 to 2022, HFD responded to over 380 fires. 380 fires we responded to. Oh, sorry. 380 fires we responded to, okay? Of those 380, 167 of them were accidental, okay? Which, which means they could have been prevented. And of those 167, approximately 59 of those were lithium ion batteries. So from 2020 to, to now, to 2022, you saw a 150% increase in the use of these, these batteries. So, so let me show you, just to show you guys some perspective of, the dip, of where storing these fires can, can possibly uh, prevent a lot of damage and a lot of pain. So um, I've, I've investigated fires from both stored next to combustibles 
and also stored in open areas. And the difference is night and day. This could be the result of just possibly a, a little shelf burning to a whole house burning, just because you're charging it on the outside or in an open air environment, as opposed to in a enclosed bedroom or near the bed, okay? So it's very noticeable. So here are some safety tips that we were able to get some good friends from FDNY on the proper handling of e-bikes and lithium ion batteries. So if you buy an electric bike, make sure it's certified by a qualified testing laboratory. You follow the manufacturer's instructions for charging and storage. Always use the manufacturer's cord and power adapter made specifically for the bike. Do not leave an electric bike unattended while it's charging. And do not leave it charging overnight. Do not use aftermarket batteries. And do not block your primary way into and out of the building with an e-bike. And do not leave an e-bike in a child's room. So just these, just having an ounce of prevention is gonna save everybody a pound of pain. Okay, thank you. take the questions as appropriate of, of based on what your question is. This might be for Tama, but um, yes, sir. of the 58, have there been any fatalities? And that is exactly why we are doing this right now. Luckily, there have only been minor injuries because of lithium ion batteries. In, uh, if, I, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, some of the friends in FDNY, they have around 59 deaths that have occurred because of this. And we want to keep it at zero. So that's why we are doing this. What are the damage assessments of the 58 and, uh, you know, just an ounce of prevention, which, you know, goes yeah. the wrong way, right? Exactly, exactly. So, so I've been to fires where the, they were charging their battery and they had just moved into an apartment, just with them. No, they, they, no uh, beds, no clothing, no nothing. And it caught fire inside of an empty bedroom. All it did was cause smoke damage, where it was an older house, two-story house and it could have been a lot worse. In fact, there were animals that were that were in the other bedroom that were easily able to escape. And all because it was it was being um, charged in an open area that wasn't next to combustibles. Yes, sir. You mentioned that if a fire does start, you know, don't try to put it out yourself, call 911. Yes. If there's just like those initial signs, say you start to smell something, what is the advice then? Do you unplug the device? Should you call 911 then? Yes, you should call and unplug it, of course, call 911. Call 911. Because worst comes to worst, it's nothing. And we come and then we leave. That's the best That's the best kind of call we like. Yes, sir. 58 out of 167 is one third. Is that the largest cause of accidental uh, fires? Well, see, that's another thing. The largest cause of accidental fires, believe it or not, is uh, unattended cooking, stove fires. Yeah, but we're not gonna tell you not to cook. You know? So it just like I said, just to have that little ounce of prevention, it's gonna save you a lot of heartache. Is there a dollar estimate for that 58? No, a dollar estimate for, for the, the damages for the 58? Oh, um, I don't know the numbers now, but it's a lot. Uh, anything else? What is the message as we head into the holidays? It seems like a lot of these could be in the Christmas tree. Yes. And that is exactly why we are here, is to give you guys some advice or the people that are buying um, e-bikes as presents for little kids, you know, our little mo'opunas, we have to help them to, to realize just a little bit of awareness of where to charge these things and how to handle it is gonna save your guys' holiday season and pro probably your life and, and uh, your uh, homes, your property. Chief Takahashi mentioned uh, electric vehicles. Have we had any incidents involving electric cables? You know, they're fairly rare on the mainland as well. Um, and uh, the other concern is there's been a big explosion in sales of electric vehicles. What are the best practices going forward for, for uh, you know, protecting against fires? So can you repeat that question again? Um, uh, have we had incidents involving electric vehicles? For one, it's a compound question. And the other one is with the explosion of sales of electric vehicles, uh, are there concerns that we may have some and what are some of the best practices? Oh yeah, prevention? of course. So uh, I don't have the stats with, with me on, on concerning if we had any actual EV fires, electric vehicle fires. However, uh, yeah, with the, with the 
rising uh, purchasing of EV vehicles, there's gonna be a, a, a situation where one of them is gonna c catch fire. So it's not a matter of, of, of if, it's a matter of when. Uh, so that's why we're, we're out here trying to tell you guys, uh, tell, the, tell everyone that uh, what, when, they, when you purchase an EV vehicle, if at all possible, you know, just like in the mainland, they'd rather you charge it outside of the garage because if, you know, if the car were to, to short circuit while it's recharging, then it could potentially catch your garage on fire. So, uh, but as of, as of now, uh, I couldn't give you the exact uh, count if there was any EV, but we, we would definitely know about it. Yeah, so. Would you folks maybe want to comment on Christmas tree fires? You know, like as we're headed into like the holiday season, any numbers on that? Or uh, I think that for here, we're just kind of, I think, really talking about uh, lithium-ion batteries right now. For I think that could be uh, maybe for offline. Okay. Yeah. So. Anything else? Oh yeah. Uh, just to address address your question as well. So we did have one incident. Uh, Tesla got into an accident and it got uh, lodged on a on a wall. It didn't catch fire, but our crews are extremely proactive uh, in in staying away and being defensive. Uh, they did stretch lines in the event that it did catch fire. And they, we also did let the, the tow yard know to isolate that car 50 feet on all sides because even after the fact, even though the, these cars don't catch fire, a thermal runaway event could still take place. Uh, and so we'd have to be aware of that as well. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. get close to some of the items on display here.